Welcome back motorized bike enthusiast. In today's video we're going to see how far you can go on a 48 volt battery with 16 amp hours or 750 watt hours, give or take. More specifically we're range testing the KBO Breeze but I'm more curious to see how far you can go on this style of battery. There'll be no dramatic elevation changes during this adventure but we will be traveling on a mix of standard roads and hard packed gravel. Basically, we have a little over three hours of daylight, so that's three hours of almost non-stop riding. Okay, we're off. It's 2 p.m. ish. And we're probably end up gonna ride till the sun goes down. I don't think I'll be able to kill the battery before then. Especially as fast as it gets dark around here. Now for this trip, I'm gonna use random pedal assist modes just based off of how I feel at the moment. And if I want to pedal, well, hell, I'm going to pedal. Subway. There we go. No barking line. <laughs> yeah, I get a six inch BLT on Italian herbs and cheese. I got my Subway. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> forgot my own damn alarm. <laughs> We're on a very slight incline. Pedal assist three, which keeps us around 18 miles an hour. I'm in gear seven, applying moderate to light pedal assistance. And we're using three bars of power, which should put us somewhere in the range of, let me see, it's two amps per bar, except for the first bar. That's not confusing. So that's 48 times four. Almost 200 watts, because math is hard. So we're using almost 200 watts. I believe it's a 750 watt hour battery, which means we could draw 750 watts for one hour, assuming the rating on the battery is true. So at this rate, if I was to continue down a highway like this, 
I would definitely get the 55 mile range that they claim. And I'm not even in a low pedal assist. This is 18 miles an hour with a cadence that I feel like I can keep up with for quite some time. And I'm well out of shape, so yeah, you know, there's that. down here never been down here look how quiet this bike is that legitimately has me impressed It's different on an e-bike even though I know I got a throttle and I can use it anytime I want I find myself pedaling almost all the time still the bike is doing most of the work but for some reason I feel guilty if I don't pedal it's weird it's not like that on the gas bike for one the gas bikes at least the cheap ones are usually so janky that you don't even bother. Like you pedal to get going and that's it. Now let's say you've got a nice build with actual gears. Well, those ones are usually a little faster and they just outrun the cadence. You can't do anything about it. So on a gas bike, you can expect to hit 30 miles an hour, as long as it's well tuned and broken in. At 30 miles an hour, you're not you're not doing anything by pedaling but 18 miles an hour to 20 you can pedal on this and actually do something half bombs generic tent firecrackers very underwhelming but a lot of fun yep. yeah use my firecrackers my firecrackers work G1 crackers. What are the odds of some random dude who just roll up on us there? So we'll take our firecrackers to a new spot. I'd like to have a conversation about motorized bikes and sidewalks. So there was a kid, he was doing the Uber Eats things on his motorized bike, and a lot of his travels took him along a busy highway. So when he could, he would ride on the sidewalk. Now, this was an empty sidewalk. There wasn't a soul on it. And he wasn't hauling ass. But this uh, commenter still freaked out. Absolutely lost his mind. And the only excuse the guy could use was it's illegal. The problem with that is you run into individuals on the road who don't care. And they're driving two to five ton machines. Roads like this, they're narrow, they have no shoulder, they have no lighting, and they can be pretty sketchy with a high speed limit. If there was a sidewalk right there, you bet your ass I'd be riding on it right now. Because it's the safer option. I don't care if you say it's illegal. It's just the safer option. The problem with these are they're, they're blanket laws. For black and white worlds, 
But we don't live in a black and white world. There's a lot of gray. If you're in the city where there's people on the sidewalk just everywhere, yeah, that law makes sense. And those cities usually have dedicated bike paths. Or you expect to see bikes on the streets a lot more often. But out in rural areas where there's hardly any pedestrian traffic and there's a lot more faster vehicles, that law just doesn't make sense. Trust me, both me and that guy would rather have me on a sidewalk. Here we go. Very nice. It's perfect. This was like designed for firecrackers. Wish I'd have brought my good microphone, but this will just have to do. I'm not 100% sure, but I think one of my back spokes is loose. No, they all feel good. I keep hearing this tapping. I don't know what it is. It's the only noise this bike makes. That's why it's so annoying. running out of light quick a lot quicker than I thought wish I'd have woke up an hour earlier ah oh, good more dogs always dogs All right, this might look familiar to some of you guys. Remember on the 4th of July, we took the daily driver on a nice adventure. Our celebrating freedom ride. It was one of our longer rides we've ever done on the motorized bikes. I think it was just over 40 miles. I gotta tell you guys, not having the throttle with out the pedal assist is really annoying sometimes it's nothing catastrophic or anything like that it's just I would like to be able to use the motor with my hand and pedal with my feet and can control it that way instead of having it have a mind of its own anyway let's get our picture Enjoy the view, guys.
Too far then. Well, I scratched in the dirt for the while. I gained all that I knew for a price. my claws and teeth Though I elbowed my way to a seat There'd be no kind of peace like you beside me No matter the rain No matter the storm I'm coming home I'm coming home Don't turn off the light, I'm coming on According to the Relive app, we made it back to town with just under 34 miles. I then proceeded to travel around a little bit longer and got up to 37 miles with two bars of battery left and under full throttle still had a decent amount of power. I only noticed a very slight drop in full throttle power. And although this doesn't tell us the maximum range of the bike, it's the best I could do under my circumstances. I just ran out of light and it was getting cold. But the estimates of this bike getting up to 55 mile under highway travel with light pedal assist, I believe these to be true. But in our road conditions the way I ride, I think 45 miles is the max I can expect to get. Congratulations to Nathaniel Keeney and Nick Spikes for your estimates on how far we would make it. Although it's not how far the battery made it, it's how far I made it. A full review on this bike will be coming in about a month, but for now I would like to add a few things just in case KBO is still watching. The brakes are incredibly squeaky, but this might be my fault. Maybe I contaminated them with greasy fingers. I just don't remember doing that. There's a weird tapping sound coming from the rear of the bike that I just can't find. The spokes feel good, the fenders rock solid, and so is the rack. This is not normally a complaint I would have, but the bike is otherwise whisper silent. The motor noise under full throttle is acceptable. It's amplified more in the microphone than it is in real life, and because I spend so little time in full throttle, I don't really care about that. The only major complaint I have about this bike, it's $1,500 and you can't use the throttle when the pedal assist is set to zero. That is really annoying and it needs to be fixed. Please give us a way to unlock the throttle while we're at zero pedal assist. In low speed operations under sketchy terrain, it's almost a must. At the end of this almost 40 mile ride, I'm actually still impressed with the bike, as I should be for $1,500. The seat with a proper handlebar setup was just comfortable enough to not cause massive burn at the end of the day. 
My legs weren't on fire the next morning when I woke up either, which is saying a lot considering I'm out of shape and I pedaled almost the entire trip, adding minor pedal assistance. The gearing on the bike is set up just right up to pedal assist level 3, but beyond that, your legs will tend to run away without any meaningful assistance. But at level 3, which is what I enjoy riding the most at 18 miles an hour on this particular bike, you can help the motor along without straining yourself. This is going to be different for some riders, but for myself, and I think the majority of most riders, any more range out of this battery and bike combination is just a bonus. As I already pushed it to the limits of what I'm willing to do on a weekly or bi-weekly adventure trip, any more mileage out of it would simply be trying to see when the battery dies. And to me this is important for more than just face value how far does it go. Because batteries degrade over time, as many of you pointed out in the comments, given the fact that I had so much extra range at the end of my adventure, after about a year or two, I reckon this bike will still have enough range to do the same trip. Especially considering that KBO claims to use high quality Samsung and LG cells in their KBO Breeze, with a whopping 900 recharge cycles. So if those specifications are true, I wouldn't look for this battery to be dying anytime soon. Thanks for going on this adventure with us, and until next time, ride safe.